Hi, this is a Ridge Runner with another episode of Pine Home Preparedness Basics. This is a uh, my first video in a long time, but I wanted to share with you some concepts that I have. I do a lot of stuff on knives and guns and stuff, but I want to deal with the beans and less of the bullets for a little while. What you have in front of you here is a butane gas uh, portable butane gas stove. Now, when you're putting together all your beans and putting them into buckets and you're putting your food cans away and you're trying to get all your preps together a lot of people neglect to remember that they need to be able to cook the food now the average person can say well I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start a fire out in the front yard and I'll cook it over the fire and that's all well and good unless it's like minus 14 degrees and you live up in upstate New York and uh, <laughs> you don't want to be outside trying to cook your dinner in that so having an, an alternative source of cooking capability, be that the top of a wood-burning stove or if uh, that's not functional for some reason, um, another form of cooking is the cooking capability is very important. Now this particular model is Gas One. Uh, it's I don't even know. It's probably China made, but the the interesting thing about these things are is they're not that expensive. Now. The, they give you the ability to store a, they come with a nice carry case, and these go for anywhere from, and they come under, under very, various names, they go for anywhere from, well, this one here, if you look at that price, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's $15.99. Yeah, I didn't spend a lot of money on this, and I've, only, I've used it a couple of times, but it's, it seems to be a pretty good unit. All right, let's fire it up so you can see. What happens? It's got a piezoelectric starter for it. And that's as high as it's going to go. I don't know if you can see the flame because it's blue and bright. It's a clean flame though. And it seems to be burning really well. But, uh, I'm just to give you an idea. Just, I don't know if you can see it or not. So I'm going to do this not recommended thing. Eh, eh oh well. Just to see that there's a flame going on there. Eh, it's not going to work, is it? Just because I want to. But, there you go. Look at that. Now you know it's burning. Alright. Anyway, the, uh, the good thing about these sorts of things is that they are, and let me turn this thing off so I'm not burn, blowing my face off, is that they are not, uh, the, 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 the fuel is imminently storable. It comes in these cans. And I'll try and add a photo at this point in the video of the cans and their individual things, uh, individual containers without the, you know, not sticking in this thing. Um, and it's very stable. Uh, the butane cans will last indefinitely. And the good thing about it is, is that you all, uh, that with something like this, you always have a source of heat, uh, of cooking heat when you need it. Um, I guess the basic concept is that no matter what you do, um, you're going to have to cook your food. Now these are, this is an option here. Other options include the propane variety. Again, the propane cylinders are imminently storable. The, now there is a disadvantage to this sort of a unit versus the propane cylinder unit. The propane cylinders can be refilled. Uh, with a special adapter that you can then hook to the propane tank uh, cylinder and then the tank uh, of a larger propane um, uh, propane apparatus like uh, your gas stove for your or your gas uh, grill in a true bug out situation the average person is not going to be taking their 20 pound propane tanks with them wherever they go consequently in the yards of the average citizen you're apt to find at least a half full propane cylinder, which means that if you have one propane cylinder in your backpack, you will have as much propane as you could want for the foreseeable future just by going into these backyards of these abandoned buildings and filling your, refilling your uh, propane cylinder to your heart's content. Now, in another video, I'm going to go through the actual motions of filling one of those, along with showing you some upgrades and options to older pieces of uh, equipment, specifically stoves, 
that'll allow you to do that. But I wanted to share with you these items here. You can find these uh, on eBay. You can find these uh, on um, Amazon. In fact, there's quite a, a, a selection on Amazon of various grades of butane cook stoves. If you're in an apartment and it runs on, you've got nothing but electric, this may be your only way of cooking um, when the power goes out. This gives you a good option. And I'll tell you, you can do some real cooking on this. Uh, if, you, if you look, here's a Spyderco Endura. So you get an idea of the size of the cooking surface. You can put a, a good sized pot on this. Um, and that's something you got to look at when you're looking at your stoves. Stability and functionality. A stove that will keep your will cook a small meal on the on the trail may in fact not be exactly what you want in a bug in situation. Um, you're going to want to think about the fact that if you're trying to make a big pot of pasta or rice for ten people, um, your whisper light stove isn't going to do it. Your your it just isn't. I mean, <laughs> so having an item like this is an inexpensive option, and uh, it works. Well, we'll go on with more of this at another episode, but for now, this is the Ridge Runner signing off. Hi, this is another episode of Pine Home Preparedness Basics with the Ridge Runner. Now, this is actually more of a concept episode. I'm not going to tell you that... You should buy, I'm going to tell you, you should buy a multi-tool. But this is actually a concept video. And uh, the concept here is the fact that, like these tools, the gear that you carry in your bug out bag, nothing in that gear should only do one thing. And I'm going to tell you why that is. The average person will say, if you look at some of these bug out bags that people are talking about on the internet, they will be carrying 70 to 80 to maybe 90 pounds worth of gear. Now that's a lot of weight. And if you're bugging out on foot in a backpack with a backpack, I'm here to tell you that unless you're in very, very good shape, that's, that's just too much. You know, you'll have a guy that has a shotgun and, and a, a tactical rifle and two handguns and a bowie knife and a sheath knife for skinning deer and a multi-tool and another multi-tool designed to, designed to crimp off his, his landmines and all kinds of other gear all piled on to the top of that with an axe, a full-size axe. Got to have that. You got to have that full-size axe and, you know, you got to have a, at least a, four, a 45 to 50 below zero sleeping bag and, you know, you, the list goes on. You get the idea. Now, a lot of those those items that I just mentioned to you are useful items. You know, sure, if you can have a big a full size axe, that's great. But the concept of a bug out bag is the same as the concept of a survival knife. And the concept of a survival knife is this: a survival knife needs to be able to do a lot of things pretty well. A survival knife is it the is is the survival knife the best option for gutting your deer? No. Will it do it in a pinch? Yes. Can you chop? Is it is it the best item for chopping limbs off a tree or cutting down a sapling to build a shelter? No. Will it do it? Absolutely. Some of them will do it very very well, but not nearly as good as a decent full size axe. Well, that's the concept that you need to think about with your entire bug out bag. For instance. There are only a number of items that you need to that, that are going to do one function. A stove. Well, a stove hooks things, right? No, actually, it does a lot more than that. You can use a stove to remove uh, impurities from water, boiling water. You can use it to sterilize instruments if you have to do minor um, medical surgery or something like that. And I'm not talking about pulling a bullet out, but I mean, if you've got a, a splinter or something, you can boil up the tweezers you're going to use ahead of time so that they're not, you know, they don't have germs and things on them. There's a hundred, the point is I'm trying to make here is that when you are picking out gear, be very careful with it. Do you need two multi-tools in your bug out bag? The answer is no. Do you and the do you need one if you carry if you carry a multi tool every day 
do you need a multi-tool in your bug out bag? Well, that's another question because at times you might find that a multi-tool is not in your inventory for whatever reason. Maybe you forgot it that day. Maybe you were in a hurry. Maybe there was some sort of uh, um, emergency that made you run out of the house in your underwear. The bug out bag should contain everything that you po that that you would ordinarily carry in your pockets. Does that mean you might be doubling up and buying something extra? Yes. So, for instance, this is the my prime. This actually just became my primary everyday carry Gerber tool. But if I forgot this one, this one here lives in my bug out bag. Because it, and with it, I can do 90% of the stuff that I do with this one. The reason that makes, that makes sense to me is because of the fact that this is a tool I don't want to be without. When I think about a, any tool I carry, my neck knife, for instance, all right, it's a knife, right? Well, it's also my spark, is my, also my edge for my sparking tool. And... If you look, this is the Dogfish, by the way, by uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool. It's a neat little unit. You should really look one up. Um, it also is a bottle and uh, bottle lifter, just in case I want to have a beer while I'm in, in an emergency. Well, the honest, honestly, you can use this to pry open all kinds of little things. Um, and these, and this right here, can be used for uh, you can for, as a lashing point, so I can make this into a spear. Not a very good one, but I could use it for that point is this has more than one function. Um, this is the one that goes on my duty belt. I just put it up here because it was there. Yes, I said that. I have I have this on my duty belt. Is it as good as this here? This is the Leatherman Kick. It doesn't have nearly the features, but it's light and it's easy to carry. And I don't want to be carrying a lot of stuff on my duty belt that's heavy. When you So carefully choosing your gear will allow you to not have to carry so much. Like if I have a large survival knife on in on or in my bug out bag, do I need to carry a machete on the outside of my bug out bag? No. Do I need to if I have a full size handgun in a holster with a, with a, with a clip on holster and some and a couple extra mags and a box of shells in my bug out bag? Do I need to throw a survival rifle on the outside of my bug out bag? Well, that really depends on where I'm bugging out to, doesn't it? And a lot of this is conditional. I think the basic concept here, and I've gone for 12 minutes and 49 seconds as of this minute, this, this, and uh, I don't want to talk you guys' ears off. So let's put it this way. If you can't think of at least two uses for an item, you have to really decide whether you need it or not. Because a bug out bag isn't supposed to be specialized. It's supposed to do a lot of things pretty well. So, with that in mind, this is the Ridge Runner signing off.